and a fascinating women's heptathlon just about to get underway here in the Bird's Nest Stadium, day nine, and the opening action in the stadium. Yes, thank you, Rob. It's the women's uh, heptathlon. We have four races. They are seeded according to their time, so on paper the fastest of them should be in the fourth of these heats. But yes, this is the first action here in the Bird's Nest Stadium. With interestingly, talking about birds, lots of swallows and swifts flying all around us at the moment. I don't know whether they've got nests here as well. Well, that's the, match, that's the actual um, mascot of these championships, isn't it? The swift. So obviously they've taken advantage of the natural wildlife. So there is the lineup for the first of the hurdles uh, races. Katerina Johnson Thompson on the inside, then Aguila, Klichinova, Markusen, Katch, Spinola, Ifantidu, Zvotsky Farkas, and Voronina. These are athletes with personal bests mostly in the just over 14 seconds. I think Katerina Johnson Thompson's a bit unfortunate to be in this race because actually she's run 1341 and that's much quicker than any of the other competitors. It'll be fascinating to see how the talented young British athlete gets on. The f other favourites, Brian Tyson Eaton and Jessica Ennis Hill, to mention the top two, will be going in the fourth of these races. This is scheduled to start at nine o'clock, the first race, and then we have them at uh, eight minute intervals. And obviously in between the races, we'll be cutting back and uh, giving you the action going on in the marathon, which of course is heating up in more ways than one. But uh, a keen anticipation here in the stadium. Quite a decent crowd, just looking round. Early days, of course, yet. We're certainly not expecting the morning sessions to be that full. The uh, athletes just getting ready. There's a reminder of the lineup. And Aguila, uh, a non starter, the Colombian. So here is Markusson of Norway. Has in fact been a, a redraw from what I originally had, so uh, we'll just go through them again. There's Markusson. She's a talented athlete, uh, second in the World University Games this year. Not her uh, best discipline here, but then Kluchinova. And the Czech, again, who comes through with uh, strong throws and jumps, 6'4", 60 points. She's uh, got to her credit in the heptathlon. Next to her is Rodriguez, the brilliant young Cuban. Just uh, 20 years of age. Then Spinola from Brazil, 6,103 points, uh, the double South American champion, Pan American bronze medalist this season. Next to her is the Greek athlete, Ifantidou. Well, she always comes through very strongly. She's the best javelin thrower amongst the heptathletes. Again, with a score of 6113 to her credit. Then we have Tkach of Russia. This year's Russian champion and the silver medalist in the European Under-23 Championships. Uh, we have then Voronina of Uzbekistan, who's the slowest in the lineup, with that personal best of 15-15, Asian champion. And uh, then we have Zhivotsky Farkas of Hungary. So no Johnson Thompson, they have in fact redrawn it. She was, uh, I thought, wrongly probably put in the first heat. And we have a, a different lineup from that which we were originally expecting. So it's Marcusen, Klusinova, Rodriguez, Aguila, Spinola, Ifantidou, Tkach, Voronina, and Zhivotsky Farkas is the actual lineup for this first of four races. So that's just caught us a little bit by surprise with the uh, change in lineup here. Not that that matters very much. What this is all about, of course, for multi-event fans, is getting as good a time as you possibly can against the international scoring tables. It's hot here in the stadium. It really is good conditions for sprinting. No question about that. It may not be suitable for marathoners, but it is for sprinters. So a blank lane with no Aguila. And they're underway with this first track track action of this first day of the 2015 World Championship. So off they go. And uh, second from the inside, Kluchinova of the Czech Republic. But next to her, the talented uh, Cuban Rodriguez. And further out, we've got uh, Spinola of Brazil. And nearest to us, it looks like, oh, it's very close indeed. But I think over on the far side, Rodriguez held on. Zhivotsky Farkas, I was going to say, nearest to us, was in the contention. I think she got third in the end. And the winning time there, 13.75. Well, that's an excellent time. 
that's uh, very close to Rodriguez's personal best, which is 13.68. So most of those heptathletes, I think, will be fairly pleased with the start that they've got. It was good to get the first uh, discipline underway. Seven events over two days. Four on this first day, leading up to the final event of today, the 200 meters. So confirmation that Rodriguez of Cuba, now she's third from the right here. She's coming through to win in 13.73. And then Ifantidou of Greece. 1377 and Zvotsky Farkas who was rewarded with a personal best of 1385. That's the athlete on the left of the screen nearest to the stands. And a useful start for the very talented Rodriguez who's really made a name at uh, junior level and is confirming that here at the senior championships. There's a big gap after those first three and it was Markusson of Norway over on the far side who um, no, it's Klusinova of the Czech Republic, rather, on the far side, who gets fourth. There's the photo. So that's the first of four races in the women's hurdles. Heat two of this opening event in the women's heptathlon, the 100-metre hurdles. On the inside, Caroline Agnew, European Junior Champion. PB this season, 13.74. Zenia Klisian, the Hungarian, she's gone inside 13.6 this season. She'll hope to get off to a great start. Karolina Tominska. Seventh in the Olympic Games here in Beijing. Fourth in Daegu. Salsia Slack, not too far away from the medals at the Commonwealth Games last year. Sixth in Glasgow. She's got a best of 1368. Portia Bing of New Zealand, fifth in the world juniors. A real emerging talent. Personal best this season, 6,102 points. Alina Fodorova, world indoor bronze medalist last year, 13.8. She also won the European Cup. Jenny Ursa, silver medalist back in Berlin, bronze in Daegu. She's back from having a baby, just like Jessica Ennis-Hill. Valerie Regel, two-time national champion, 12th in the European Championships last year. And Nassifatu Tian, the Belgian, European bronze medalist last year, her lifetime best just inside 13.8. Jennifer Ursa coming back to the sport, having had a baby, starts third from the left hand side. Agnew, Krisan, Tominska, Slack, Bing, Fodorova, Ursa, Regel, Tiam. Second heat of the women's 100 metre hurdles for the heptathlon. Searing conditions here in the bird's nest already. So a long day and a long way to go. Salsia Slack got a good start, but then clipped one or two of the hurdles. Bing coming through well for New Zealand. And on the far side, Tominska now coming into her running. And it's Tominska who's coming away from Bing of New Zealand. 13.54. Good to see Tominska recapturing some decent form. She's been a quality athlete over the years. Excellent run by Portia Bing as well, not put off by the stumble from Salsia Slack on her inside. But Tominska, 13.52, that's a season's best for the pole. Well, you can see Salsia Slack, fourth on the right-hand side, gets a great start, but then clips that hurdle. And the two athletes on her inside and outside begin to come through. Bing going very well in five at this point and now Tominska just starts to pull away a little bit good runs 
from the first two. Jenny Ursa, incidentally, being given third place, 13.67. So she, too, is coming back to some decent form. And it'll be interesting to see how she, along with another new mum, Jessica Ennis-Hill, get on here over the next uh, two days. But a solid start from Tominska, a season's best. Bing, incidentally, in second place, rewarded with a lifetime best, 13.59. Well, indeed, an excellent run by the pole. She really is such a consistent performer, as you've said, Rob, over many years. And there is the confirmed time, 13.52 for her, 1,047 points ahead of Bing, 1,037, and Erisa Chrisam, the very promising young Belgium TM, after that. Uh, we've got two more races to come, of course, in this uh, heptathlon. Well, here we go to the third of these heats, Barbara the Wabat, United States, national record holder this year was 6,500 points, so she's in great form. Just on her inside. Also up of the, the Nigerian record holder, there's Nawaba. The American in great form, and uh, well, we know how good the Americans are at these uh, multi-events. Season's best, 13.38. Just on her inside, the Nigerian record holders, as I said before. Odahua Osawusa of Nigeria. And Estonia, Grit Sadika. Second in the world this last year. As Schaefer, here she is. As I said, second in the world last year, Karen Schaefer of Germany. Probably one of the favourites for a good time in this race. And in lane five from Latvia. Adamina. Nadine Borsen of the Netherlands. Ten to the World Championships. Specialist at the high jump, really, so this event perhaps not her best. Then for Germany, Claudia Rath. And then uh, perhaps the. Uh, one of the favourites behind in his hill, Johnson Thompson, who was uh, number one last year in this event. And then just on the outside, seventh in the European Championships, better from the Netherlands. Away cleanly. And Wraith, the German, looking very strong in the middle of the field. Also going well on the outside, and Awaba. But it's Wraith, I think it's coming through now, looking very strong. Over the last hurdle, it's clear. Awaba, I think it was, have got in third place there. And the winner, Medina. The winning time. 1321. Yes, I was going to say, is a lifetime best. 1321 for Adamina. That's a good performance for her in the first event. She's absolutely delighted. One thing I thought was interesting there was Johnson Thompson, Steve, who I've got a particular eye out for because she's immense talent, very slowly away, but she's still run a personal best in third place, 1337. Well, watching on the outside there, Nawiba looked going very well in the beginning of this race. Adamina coming through late there in the middle of the picture. You can see. In the end, that was a great run from her, personal best. Well, it was a national record for Sudeiko of Estonia, a 13.36, a whole lot of personal best and season's best. And I think it just confirms what you said before, ideal conditions well, for sprinting. And the Mondo track, as we know here, very, very fast, as Usain Bolt proved that many, many years ago. Well, it's not about the winning, is it, here, but it is about performances, and those girls got some very good points on the board there first time up. And Medina there with a personal best, as we said before. Great performance from her. Well, this track is still 
as I said, looks second from the left at Johnson Thompson, really slowly away, almost ponderous, but gets into a running so very well. No catching the flying Latvian, in fact, the Baltic States doing very well. Well, that was a shame, of course, on the inside there. But uh, that's the problem, and that really ruins her chance as well. She's well, gone down the American, that yeah, as you say, the American champion there, Nawaba, really struggled with that. We missed that on the first part of the race, really, but uh, she obviously fell very early on. Canberra's keeping up with the lead there. But this year shows once again you can't mess up any single event in a multi-eventer because you'll get virtually no points there and that means she's completely out of it as far as a, a decent position is concerned. She can continue if she wants to, whether she wants to is a moot point. Shame. Very, very disappointing for the American champion. She hit one hurdle, she got up, but she hit another hurdle and that was the end of it. And Absolutely. Bedina, though, that was a run of a life, really. Very fast time, 13.21. Well, there's the confirmation of the result of the uh, third of the four races in the hurdles. 1,093 points, the most so far by Ikonyadzi Admanina. But they're going to be quicker in the last one. That, I think, we can almost guarantee. Now, poor Nuaba on the extreme right of the picture there, crashing out of the event so soon, just after a few seconds of action. Well, she crashed out so early on there that uh, didn't want to pick her up. Cameras concentrating on the lead, athletes panning in. A shame. That's a terrible shame. But absolute delight for the top people. There's a lot of very good times here. Very good points. Sets them on their way very nicely as we look at the athletes getting ready for the fourth heat. Not sure if we'll have a look at the marathon in between. No, they're just getting ready here. And there's a site on the left of the screen there of Nadina uh, Visa, the 20-year-old uh, who's already a world junior bronze medalist, both at heptathlon and at uh, this event, the 100 hurdles. And we've got the favourites, Tyson Eaton and Jessica Ennis-Hill in this race. And a good crowd all around the Bird's Nest Stadium here, as this is the lineup: Kasyanova of Ukraine, Tyson Eaton of Canada, Mokonyuk, Ukraine, Day Monroe, USA, Visa, the Netherlands, Jones, Barbados, Ennis Hill for Great Britain. And it's good to see the Olympic champion, as I said, back in action. She's going in this uh, final race here. And then outside her, Koala of Burundi and Bugard of the USA. So this is Tyson Eaton, the head of the world rankings this year and the favourite coming into this event. Personal best of 13 seconds. She really is strong throughout. She'll be watched, no doubt, by Ashton Eaton, her husband. Then there's Mokonyuk of Ukraine, also with a personal best of exactly 13 seconds, European under-23 bronze medalist. Then Damon Rowe of the USA, second in this year's US Championships, former champion. Good event for her, 13.31, but that leaves her a little bit behind some of the rest of the field. Over 6,500 points at her best. This is Visa, good event for the 20-year-old Dutch athlete who's got a best of 12.97. Recently got a bronze medal in the European under 23s at this discipline. Here then is Akela Jones, the Barbados uh, athlete who was the world junior long jump champion last year. This one of her best events at 13.10, a new personal best this season for the 21 year old. Jessica Ennis Hill will remember the fantastic start that she got in the Olympic Games when she ran that personal best of 12.54 for the 100 hurdles. And here she is, having given birth to Reggie last year, back in action. Then we have Martha Koala, another 21-year-old from Burundi, African champion last year. She goes in lane eight, this nine-lane track here in the bird's nest. And finally, Erika Bugar for USA, former American collegiate indoor pentathlon champion from Mississippi State. It's got a heptathlon best of 6288 points. So the final event of the 100 hurdles, the first of the seven in the heptathlon here at the 2015 World Championships, Beijing. Kasyanova, Tyson Eaton, Mokonyuk, Day Monroe, Visa, Jones, Ennis Hill, Koala and Bugard. Tyson Eaton in two, Ennis Hill in three, Visser in five, perhaps the ones to watch out for.
Well, Ennis Hill is away very well in lane seven. So too Bugard of the USA on the outside. Coming through in the middle there. Jones of Barbados. But Ennis Hill going well. Tyson Eaton's running fine as well. And it's Visa of Holland who's going to win. Visa first across the line. Ennis Hill in second place. And over on the far side, Tyson Eaton. And that's a brilliant, brilliant run. 12.82. The Dutch athlete has smashed her personal best. She's taken it down from 12.97 to 12.82. Really good running. Ennis Hill, well, she got second place. It's just a little slower than she might have wished for. Not quite as quick as uh, she perhaps might have expected, not as quick as she was in London. Nonetheless, a solid start to her heptathlon campaign. Yeah, fascinating race, that one. 12.81, Visser's personal best. But remember, Visser picked up a bronze medal in the World Juniors last year, individually in the 100 hurdles, as well as in the heptathlon. But she's taken some notable scalps there. Ennis Hill in second. Tyson Eaton inside 13 seconds with a lifetime best. So the Canadian continuing the great form that she's displayed all season. Perhaps just a tiny little bit rusty for the Olympic champion by her own very high standards. Still a solid start, but not the fireworks we saw with 12.54 en route to the Olympic title three years ago. Although we probably wouldn't have expected that, bearing in mind how much time she's lost to injury and to the maternity leave, if you like. Well, absolutely, but a personal best by the favourite, the Canadian Tyson Eaton, uh, 12.98. I'm sure she'll be thrilled with that. And, of course, a splendid run by Visa, who certainly puts herself in contention for a medal as well. But it's safe to say that uh, all the major contenders safely through the uh, heptathlon, except, of course, for the loss of Barbara Nuaba of the USA. Well, there are the points. Visa getting 11.53, Ennis Hill 11.38, Tyson Eaton 11.27, Mokinuk also over 1,100. Good points, first event of the heptathlon. They'll be back later. So we can take uh, yet another look here. This is a concentration really on Ennis Hill, who's left of the screen there. Good solid performance by her without having the sort of sheer snap that we have seen of her sometimes. But what a marvellous run by the 20-year-old Dutch athlete Nadina Visser going clear of the rest of the field. And Tyson Eaton maintaining a strong challenge. So we uh, look at the scene here in the bird's nest, the roof protecting uh, most of the crowd from the sun. And here is the standings in the heptathlon after the first event, which we had first thing in the morning, the 100-metre hurdles, a brilliant personal best, but Anita Visser sees her heads those tables with the other favourites, Ennis, Bryson Thompson, uh, Johnson Thompson, I should say, and uh, Bryson, uh, Tyson Eason. I don't know why I'm getting in the muddle over that one. But uh, both Tyson Eaton and Johnson Thompson did personal too, too bests. Many, too many double barrels. Yeah, I, think, I know. Right? Exactly. <laughs> Three major contenders, and they've all got double barrels. We should get used to it, but anyway. And that's the full run-up. And they, in fact, have been out there competing in the high jump for quite some time now. We've got two pools. One's at uh, 174 and one's at 177. And all the major contenders are still back in action. So, uh, Luckily, though, they're out, the, out of the sun. They're in the, in the shade there, which is, I think, important. The conditions, yep. as we always keep saying, very, very hard down there. Here's Tyson Eaton in the high jump, going over very nicely. She really is in super form. Leads the world rankings this year for the heptathlon. Has been setting a series of personal blessings, including today, with 12.98 in the 100-meter hurdles. Just nudges that bar a little bit. But Urson, who's a fine high jumper, just showing just why she is uh, rated like that with the 180 clearance here. Well, she's 194. She set a Dutch uh, record indoors. <laughs> Jessica Ennis Hill. Yep, very nice. High jumper, of course. So one hopes so one could still say this is still early stages for an athlete of this calibre. Started at 174 and now has gone over 180. Schaefer of Germany, now she's been busy. She entered at 171. She too has uh, four successive clearances up to this height. 
Another athlete who was very good as a youngster, world junior champion back in 2008. Tyson Eaton over 180 on the second attempt. I jump, um, I wouldn't call it a weak event, but not one of her better ones, but certainly this is for Brurson. And Brurson going over very nicely. We saw her, of course, clear before. Brurson, who's got a best high jump of 194. Had uh, an ankle injury early in the year, so let's hope she's. Uh, got over that it needed two attempts for her to go over 180 Jessica Ennis Hill the bar is at 183 it's exactly six foot in the high jump this is her first attempt second event of the heptathlon oh again no problem very nice clearance I should just mention we haven't seen it but Katarina Johnson Thompson one of the other favorites came in at 180 and only just cleared on her third attempt at the height so uh, Amazing moments there for her, but all going well for Jessica Ennis Hill, the other British athlete. Still a lot of competitors left in the lineup, and here's Nadine Brursen, the indoor Dutch record holder at 194. Here she goes at 183. And again, sailing comfortably over. I think this is a high, there's a lot of um, athletes still left in the competition very large proportion of the heptathletes, but this is a height which may sort some of them out. As it is, we've seen two women go clear on their first attempts. Delight continues for those who continue on in the heptathlon. Well, we're looking at the two pools of the high jump there. Now, this is uh, Kuchinova, third attempt for her at 183. Very important jump for the young Czech. Oh, yes. Very good. So she goes on. And uh, she's got a high jump best of 190. So it would have been disappointing if she hadn't cleared that height. Gineva, who was seventh at the uh, Moscow World Championships in the heptathlon. Keep cool. And now Tyson Eaton. Well, third attempt for her at 183. Oh, well, that is a disappointment. Now, 180, she cleared. That's not a disaster, but that's certainly below what the favourite would have looked for because she has a high jump best of 189, and she has lost some ground here on what she might have expected in the heptathlon after two events. So she comes here as favourite, world leader at over 6,800 points. A little disappointment there in the high jump. Well, though, Jessica Ennis Hill continues her merry way. She's had no failures. She really is looking very good. And this was 186 on her first attempt. 174, 80, 83, 86, all clear by the reigning Olympic champion. Now, Zivotsky Farkas. She also is contending now at 186. First attempt at this height for the Hungarian. Husband Attila is also a top decathlete. Multiple Hungarian champion. 186. Yep, so that's good. And indeed, not only is that good, it equals her personal best, in fact. Doesn't seem to show any particular emotion at doing that. 
that's just exactly what she needed and then see whether she can go yet higher for a world university games bronze medalist uh, katarina johnson thompson had problem with her opening height Past 183, 186, oh yes, well clear. Well, now she set a British record in the high jump indoors at 197, but a very bad moment at 180. Came in at that height and needed three attempts and only just got over as it was. But now she goes on, 186, no problem, first time. Alina Fyodorova from Ukraine. Lost quite a lot of the competitors at 183, including, of course, Tyson Eaton, the overall favourite. So Fyodorova looking at the bar then. And she goes clear at 186. Well, we've got quite a number over this height as well. Kuchinova and Ennis Hill and Shibotsky Varkas and Johnson Thompson all on their first attempts. And Fyodorova going on a second here. So next up is Brursen, one of the top high jumpers in this field, but there are actually a lot of good high jumpers in this lineup. The likes of Johnson Thompson and TM of Belgium. Brursen here. Yeah. 86 for her. Slight surprise that she needed two goes at it. Well now in the high jump, 186 is the height, and this is the third attempt for Rodriguez from Cuba, an American Games champion and an athlete with a high jump best of this height. So can she equal it here? Yes, she can. And she had an excellent start in the hurdles as well. So she's fulfilling her youthful promise at the moment. She was the world junior champion in 2012. And in fact, uh, two years later, got the silver medal last year. This is her second world championship, so although she's only 20, therefore she's got quite a lot of international experience. Here we go, 189, third attempt for Jessica Ennis Hill. Oh no, I'm afraid not. Well, she's had a decent morning, but not exceptional. She's done 186 in the high jump, and that's of course uh, opened up a little gap on Tyson Eaton, who did 180. She was a little down on her hurdles best, but again, better score than Tyson Eaton, who did a PB. So I think Ennis will be in the lead. And now Johnson Thompson, her third and final attempt at 189. Scare at 180, nicely clear at 186, but two failures so far at this height. Remember, she has done 197 indoors for the British record this year. No one yet clear at this height. 189, Katarina Johnson Thompson. Oh, yes, well clear in the end, although it seemed to me a little stutter on the run up, but nonetheless, okay. So it doesn't look as if it's going perfectly for her, but she's certainly got the height there. And she'll get an advantage then over her main rivals when we come to tot up those points. No, Brursen, her last attempt then at 189. Again, this is an athlete who's cleared this height before. But no, so she too has to settle for a 186 best today. So again, a little down on her best scores. Uh, this is the... Third and final attempt at 192 for Katarina Johnson Thompson. She's clear at 189 in the high jump and looking to add yet more points. A height she's done before, at least that 197 British record indoors this year. So out on her own, only athlete to clear 189. Now she's trying 192. No, I'm afraid not. Well, 189, pretty good. She's uh, gained some points on her rivals, 
after a very shaky start to the competition when she needed three attempts at her opening height of 180, that she's gone on to outjump all the rest, even though she might have liked a little bit more. So that concluded the women's uh, heptathlon and high jump competition. We didn't see uh, Tiam of Belgium, but she was also up there at these heights. She had a, a best of 186 today. So not all the competitors actually at their best, and there there was the result. So Johnson Thompson gaining 1,093 points. Ennis Hill, Klucinova, Zakova, Farkas, Fyodorova, Brerson, Rodriguez, and Tia, all going 186. Now, amongst the competitors who managed 180 was the favourite, Brianne Tyson Eaton. So just losing a little ground on uh, what uh, she would have looked for. And the hurdles uh, fastest, Nadia Visser, also going over 180. So that's the full list. Damon Rowe, a little disappointing. The American only doing 177 because she's a 190 plus jumper. And we've already lost Kasyanova, Aguila, and Koala from the original start list. So that concludes the opening uh, competitions in the women's heptathlon. And we now have the situation that Jessica Ennis Hill leads the way on 2192 points, Katarina Johnson Thompson 2162, and Nadina Visser 2131. A lot to go for, of course, as we continue the competition with the shot and the 200 meters today, and then the long jump, javelin, and 800 meters to come tomorrow. Barbara Nuaba managing to get a clearance in in the high jump after crashing out in the hurdles. The heptathlon shot put. That's uh, about to get underway. A couple of minutes away from uh, that. Two pools. And that is the standings after the first two events of the day. The 100 hurdles is the first up. And Jessica Ennis Hill was a little below par, but uh, did very well both there and in the high jump to take the lead. Her teammate, Katrina Johnson-Thompson, in second place, had a near catastrophe in the high jump, needed three attempts at her opening height of 180, but then went on to clear the best height of anybody at 189. And she had set a personal best in the 100-meter hurdles earlier, as indeed also had Brianne Tyson-Eaton, the Canadian who's the overall favorite, or coming into the event was the overall favorite. She ran at 12.98, taking 0.02 of her best, but was a little below par in the high jump, with a 180 clearance. So this is the throwing order for Group A of the shot. Some strong Dutch athletes, even though uh, Daphne Schippers isn't competing, we've got Vetter there. And we've also got in the other pool, Nadine Visser, who's lying third overall in this competition, and Nadine Brussen, so a very strong trio from the Netherlands, who have a good record in multi-event competition. Karlin Schaefer of Germany, another of the other contenders for a medal. Ikanietzi Adminina was absolutely delighted to set a personal best in her race in the hurdles as well. And uh, Jessica Ennis Hill, the overall leader at the moment, former world champion, Olympic champion, is the tenth putter in that particular group. Well, here's the uh, pre meeting favourite for the shot, Brian Tyson Eaton. Not one of her best events. She probably comes through more strongly on day two. And she slipped just a little bit with a 180 high jump. Well, that's around, well, pretty much spot a 13 meter, just a little over that uh, start for her. So she'll be losing ground to some of the athletes because we have seen puts getting close to 15 meters. Jessica Ennis Hill, though, the leader, had a no throw in the first round. And Katarina Johnson-Thompson is a weak event for her, and she's got, got a 12.40. So 13.05 for Tyson, takes her score up to 2.836. She'll be looking for a little better than that. And here's Carolyn Schaefer for Germany. And that's a similar throw that we saw really from Tyson Eaton. Schaefer, who's ranked six, uh, second on the uh, rankings this season with a 6.547 score, former world and European junior champion, yet to win a senior medal at a major event, though she's fourth in the Europeans last season. 
and improving to 13.31 with one round to go. Now here's Fyodorova, 14.98, that's the best we've seen. Lying fifth overall now, so he's moving up in the standings with some good shot putting. For her, the target must be 15 metres. Well, very, very close again. Only just inside the sector, but it's not going to be an improvement. It is 14.82. Now then, Jessica Ennis Hill, just overbalanced on her first throw, and therefore a no throw. Again, she's not back to her very best form, but she's performing very creditably. And uh, she led, of course, after two events. At her best, she's well over 14 metres. This a little under 14, ending a little bit off balance there. Thirteen seventy-three for Ennis Hill, and she keeps that first place with two nine six eight points. Now then, Tyson Eaton, 13.05, she's back in 10th. Has got good events to come, but she's uh, just losing a bit of ground on what we might have expected from an athlete we're rating as the favourite for the title coming into this event. That's better, much better, getting close to, uh, to 14 metres of territory. This should move her up, uh, I would have think, a place or two. Well, yes, not only has it done so, 13.70, but she's now up from 10th before that put to 4th overall. It's not a lot between the top throwers, though. Brerson, well capable of also extending that uh, 13.79 opener. World Indoor Champion in 2014, similar put. Add much to her points total if it does at all. Athlete with a personal best in the shot of 14.93, so she's uh, something like a meter down, over a meter down on that. Oh, it's better than I thought. 14.59, so that indeed has moved her up a spot into third. Well, there's the result of the heptathlon shot put. A big come through from Nafatisu Tiam of Belgium with that fine 15.24. And that's taken her to second overall in this event. Jessica Ennis Hill was only 15th best with the 13.73, perhaps a little disappointing for her. She retains, however, her overall lead. And Brianne Tyson Eaton is now in fifth place after that shot put. Katrina Johnson Thompson has slipped back from uh, second place all the way through to ninth, although that 12.47 was just a personal best for her, even if only 30th best amongst those shot putters. So this is the first race of the heptathlon, and actually it features the athletes lying second and third overall now, because uh, Tiam is second at 2.934, and Brerson, who's uh, just on the right of the screen there, is in third place at 2.930. Agnew, the hugely impressive European junior champion, when she's had a whole series of personal bests. She goes on the inside. Four races, <coughs> she excelled in the shot put. <laughs> but this is Tiam, then, the tall Belgium. Good high jumper, didn't quite match her best, but certainly stayed well in contention with a 186, and then that 50 meter plus shot put. So there are four races in the heptathlon. They're graded by times. These are the slowest on paper, but it doesn't really matter where you finish in the race. It's a question of what time you do and what points. And those are the standings. So Ennis Hill leads at 2.968, but isn't it close? Just, uh, what, 114 points separating those first nine there, and these aren't far behind either. So we could still see quite a lot of change in this uh, race, the 200 metres, and all to play for tomorrow when we have the long jump, javelin, and 800 metres.
It looks to be a very, very close race for medals in the women's heptathlon. 33 of the 36 women still in action here. Jennifer Issa on the inside. She'll, she's uh, in 12th place overall at 2823. And then we've got Brusen, 2930, the third placer. And Tiam, the second placer, at 2934. On the outside, then, we've got uh, Markusen, Dutch athlete. Got a best of 24.57. That hasn't been close to that yet this year. Boronina of Uzbekistan. Might uh, be stretched a little bit here because she's only got a best in the mid-25 area. Just turning around here. Caroline Agnew of Switzerland again. Not her best event by any means. 25.24 for her. And then the tall Belgium, Navatiso Tiam, certainly one of the major contenders still for a medal in this event. European bronze medalist last year. Belgian record holders took over that from Tia Halibu. Jivotsky Farkas of uh, Hungary. Well, again, not one of her better events, 25-43. She was a good shot putter, though. And she is now up in eighth place overall. Then Ifantidou of Greece. Uh, Principal forte is the javelin that will come tomorrow. Lane three. This is Brusson then. He's third placer overall, two nine three zero, and she's pretty useful at twenty four fifty seven personal best in the two hundred. She'll be looking for a good time here. As will Jennifer Issa, twenty three ninety five. Well, she hadn't competed for a couple of years, making a good comeback this year. So let's see whether she can get back to the sort of top form that that 23.95 indicates. And in fact, makes her easily the fastest in the field. And there's a big roar in the stadium. We'll no doubt bring you what that was all about in a little while. The athlete's just looking up to see what it was. You might be able to guess. So, just while the hubbub dies away, What could be a very special moment. We concentrate then again on this 200 metres first race of four. Brerson at 24.57, personal best. One of three athletes who've broken 25 seconds this year. That's Ursa in one, or rather in lane two, but on the inside then Brerson in three and Tia in six. And those indeed are the three athletes who are best placed overall. So where they go, Bresson then in uh, second from the inside. And she's certainly made an excellent start here. Tia we're looking out for the second placer overall. She's in lane six, but she's uh, not going so well as Agnew outside her. It's on the inside, Issa on the inside. She is indeed returning to form. And Agnew looking very strong indeed. And finishing strongly also there, Tiam. But, uh, not very special times. We're going to see much quicker ones in the remaining heats. 25.04. Issa will be reasonably happy with that. But, uh, it's a little outside her best, 24.79. And uh, Agnew, the up and coming talent, ran well for much of that race. 25.03, and we're going to see some times that could well be under, should be under 24 seconds in later races. Second heat of the women's 200 metres, the end of a long day. Anastasia Mokunyuk of Ukraine lies fourth overall. She starts in lane four. Just outside, Jorgelis Rodriguez, the new Pan American champion. Kuchinova of the Czech Republic on the outside. She was seventh two years ago. She's lying 13th at the moment. Pretty good in the high jump, 186. We'll be looking to finish with a flourish here. Just gone quarter past eight in the evening local time here. It is cooling a little bit and there's still quite a big breeze around that top bend. 
Kuchinova of the Czech Republic then on the outside in nine. Every athlete in this race, incidentally, has a season's best and a personal best somewhere in the 24s. Alina Fodorova, she's in seventh overall, 14-17 in the hurdles and then 186 in the high jump, 24-70, she's in PB shape this year. Zenia Klusian, 14th place, the European under-23 champion this year. Big sigh, big deep breath. There'll be some fatigue in these legs. Gret Sadiko, the Estonian, 13.36, really good on the hurdles. European under-23 champion four years ago. Then comes Valerie Regel. 162 in the high jump, really let her down. She's got some work to do here. She's 24.30 at her best. And Anastasia Mokunyuk of Ukraine, 13.07 in the hurdles, 183 in the high jump. 6,331 points, her personal best tally. That's earlier this year. Then Rodriguez, outside the top 10 at the moment for the Pan American champion. She's got a best of 24.19. And on the inside, representing the United States, Sharon Day Monroe, 24.02. She's got the fastest personal best, the season's best, three tenths slower than that. So Day Monroe, USA on the inside, Rodriguez, Cuba, Makunyuk of Ukraine in four, Rigel of Switzerland in five, Sadiko, Estonia, six, Krizan, Hungary, seven. Fodorova, Ukraine in eight, and Klachinova of the Czech Republic on the outside in nine. Second heat, the women's 200 metres. Their day's work comes to an end here. And certainly Rodriguez needs to produce something good here to get back inside the top ten heading into day two. So who's going to finish? with a flourish, Makunyuk has got away well, she's already up onto the shoulder of Rigel, and also going well is Sadiko. So it's Sadiko of Estonia, with Makunyuk just on her inside. These two pulling away from the field, good run this from the Estonian. Grit Sadiko, former European under-23 champion, 24-42, not too far outside her season's best. Useful points for her, she's lying down in 23rd place, so she'll hopefully pick up a few after that performance. Started well with 13.36 on the hurdles, but uh, needed to produce something there just to get back in the mix. 24.41, and then Makunyuk, 24.6. There's a confirmation, good run there from Grit Sudeiko. Makunyuk finishing in second, good points for her at the end of a solid opening day. Third heat of the heptathlon women, 200 metres. And as uh, Rob said in the previous seat, most of those athletes could run about 24. Most of these now are dipping down under that in the 23 second uh, area for the 200 metres. Demitska on the outside there. She dropped from 24th, oh, sorry, she moved up from 24th to 13th after that 13.79 throw in the uh, shot put. So that's a good performance from her. She's uh, fourth at the World Championships in 2000. On the inside of her, Osawusa who moved uh, down, I'm afraid, from 16th to 32 on the placings after that shot, but not a good performance from her. European silver junior medal at the under-23 is Dukac of Russia. She's in 10th place after a great throw, 13.99 in the uh, shot put. In lane six, six in the Commonwealth Games, so if you slap. Again, moved up well after the shot put, 13.53 for her. In five, Portia B. She uh, kept her placing, really just moved up one place from 18th to 19th after that shot put, but she's one of the favourites in this 200 metres, so she could run well. And then from Latvia, and Medina. Dropped a little bit in the uh, shot put, not her best event, 12.71 there, so uh, moved from 15th to 29th. And then the other probably good runner in this race, Claudia Rath. Again, not so good in the shop at 13.09, dropping from 14th to 25th place. On the inside, Vanessa Spinola. Moved up seven places in the shot put to 21st place overall. So it's been a long day as uh, 
Rob said for these women, but this is the last event. Just one more heat after this. But it's all about times, really. It's not about placing, it's about times, as we always keep saying in the heptathlon and decathlon. It's a competitive environment, but it's against yourself, really, for most of the uh, disciplines. The gun goes. Bing of New Zealand got a good start. Slack on the outside, also running well. Also, Wusu in the green. Out there in lane eight, also running well. But on the inside, I think it's Bing of New Zealand running well. On the inside, Adamina. Bing is closing, but uh, Adamina is holding her off. These two clear at the moment. Fast finish on the outside here. Tomitska also running well, but it's going to be Adamina and then Bing. And I think Tomitska may have just got third there. Yes, contesting it with Rath, certainly. She, she finished probably quicker than Rath, but uh, whether she quite got up, we'll wait and see. Not much winning, in it. Winning time, 23.97. So for being at, uh, if it is that time, is a personal best, I think. So that's a good performance from her. Yes, and she started with a personal best in the hurdles, so she's had a pretty useful day. Yeah. So they're competitive, really, but it's the time they need. You can see here at Medina of Latvia running well. Bing closing a little bit in the last two or three strides. Not much between them, really. And as Peter pointed out, very close between Rath and Tomitska for third place. But it's not about the performance in terms of positions. It's about times. There's the photo finished. There's the confirmation of that uh, third 200 metres. Adamina taking it from Bing and Tominska coming through with the same time, really, as Rath, 24.15. So one race left in the 200 metres, and we do have the fastest runners. I include uh, Jessica Ennis-Hill, who at her very best, 22.83, makes her the quickest in the field by some way. She's operating a little below her best level, but she is leading this heptathlon. Well, we saw the second and third placer in the first heat, and they posted modest 200-metre times. They're going to drop back in the time, surely, as we skim through from the outside. This is Kayla Jones of Barbados, multiple talent, high jump and long jump are her best disciplines. But 23.72 makes her a good 200-metre runner as well. Then we've got Nuaba of the USA, out of contention because uh, she crashed out in the hurdles, but good to see her continuing. The American, who's run 23.82. Then, the favourite, Tyson Eaton, and this is a good event for her, with the best of 23.34. That is the best any of these women have run this year. She is, at the moment, nearly 100 points behind Ennis Hill. And this is Ennis Hill, our leader of the uh, heptathlon coming into this last event. And she's good at this. Can she get that special speed that she has shown in her titles, when she won the Olympic title, when she won the world title. And then we've got Nadina Visser, again a fine sprinter, 23.62, smashing personal best to start the day in the 100 meter hurdles, fastest of the field. Ditto Katarina Johnson-Thompson, she too ran a hurdles best. And 22.89, well I'd said that Ennis Hill was the one under 20 Three. Well, of course, Johnson Thompson also. Not this year, though. Interesting to see how fit she is, how well she can run this. Another of the very strong Dutch trio. This is Anouk Vetter with a personal best of 23.82. And then Erika Bugard, the American. Well, she's run 23.48. Well, we saw 25 second times and coming down to 24 second times of four. But this field completed by Caroline Schaefer of Germany with the best of 23.53, which means that all these women have run comfortably under 24 seconds before. So we're going to see some changes in the overall point standings. And it's Ennis Hill who's in first place, who goes in lane six. Tyson Eaton, who's lying fifth, goes in seventh. And Visser, who's in sixth, goes in lane five.
Schaefer, Bougard, Vetter, Johnson, Thompson, Visser, Ennis, Hill, Tyson, Eaton, Nuaba, and Jones. So the final event of the heptathlon 200 meters on day one. And it's a good start from Tyson Eaton, hoping to gain some points over Ennis Hill, who's just behind her. But Johnson Thompson it is, who's taking a lead now. The brilliant, brilliant talent of Johnson Thompson. It's the two British athletes coming clear of the field. Johnson Thompson, a big win. Ennis Hill in second place. Visser in third. And Tyson Eaton way back in fourth place. And she's losing her position as favourite for this title now. And a very good time of 23.09 for Johnson Thompson, for whom this is the first 200 meter race of the year. Well, she has run a bit quicker than that, but just showing what a very special talent she is. She lost ground in the shot. She may well lose ground in the javelin tomorrow, but she remains in contention. Good runs by both the British women. Jessica Ennis Hill was actually up onto the shoulder of Tyson Eaton, surprisingly early in that 200 meters. Visa was trying to hang on after starting her campaign so well with that wonderful performance in the hurdles. But uh, Katerina Johnson-Thompson, when she got into her full stride, and she's so much taller than Ennis Hill, she was away and clear. Hill was sort of just about hanging on at that stage. But Brianna Tyson-Eaton, who's got a brilliant long jump, is now going to be forced to produce it tomorrow morning. And Johnson Thompson's got an even more brilliant long jump. Now the positions have changed. Ennis still leads, 4,005. Johnson Thompson all the way up from ninth to second at 3.925. Visser is in third, 3.871. Six ahead of Tyson-Eaton in fourth. So this is how it looks coming into the second day of the heptathlon. The two British athletes, first and second, Ennis Hill and Johnson Thompson, who's such a good long jumper, she could take the lead with that event. And then Visa, and then Tyson Eaton. But still, it's close. One of them, obviously, the heptathlon women, long jump over the back straight. Yes, uh, we, it's been going for a little while. They're into the first round. Big field of over 30 uh, competitors here. And uh, we're about, uh, well, a little over halfway through the first round, so we may well get to see some of the uh, best jumps so far. And in fact, we've just had a very big jump. Now, that's the overnight situation. Ennis Hill leading at 4.005 from Johnson Thompson and Visa. And then Tyson Eaton, the pre-meeting favorite, in fourth place. But very little to choose between these athletes. From Ennis is uh, just over 4,000. Well, we've got 18 there at 3,700 or more. So the long jump could well be crucial here. The, going in two groups, this is the first group. It includes Nadina Visser, for instance, the overall third placer. And then Katerina Johnson-Thompson there, the second placer. And Jessica Ennis-Hill, who's lying 11th. And Tyson Eaton, who's lying 14th. And then uh, Natafetisu Tiam, Tiam, the promising Belgian, who's actually just jumped, um, no jump. And this is the second group. So most of the uh, top names in terms of where they are currently in the competition are in that A group. No real significance, it doesn't really matter which group they're in. It's all about what distances you record and what points therefore you gain. We've got this long jump now. Later on today, we'll have the javelin. So this is the first jump then we can take a look at. And Ina Visa, a very promising up and coming youngster, just 20 years of age. The World Juniors last year, she got bronze medals in both heptathlon and 100 meter hurdles. And she started yesterday in prime fashion with a new personal best by big margin at the 100 meter hurdles. So, well, that's just over six meters. So one might call that a good safe jump to start with, the white flag raised. It can be quite important that you make sure you've got a decent jump in. You see, they've got, she's got a lot to spare on the board there. Well, she can go hard for it after this now, with a decent uh, jump already recorded, although some way short of her personal best. And she's got, what, these 15 centimeters to spare there on that uh, 6 10 jump. Just a slight breeze behind them, and there's an indication there at plus 0.4. Not much wind here today, as we've mentioned, with the athletes out on the course. And now here is the overnight leader. This is Jessica Ennis-Hill.
And again, a decent start. She liked to have a little more than that. So she's been jumping up to 6.30 and has a best just over 6.50. And again, playing it reasonably safe. What we haven't seen, and it was just before Ennis, in fact, was that Katerina Johnson-Thompson, who had a very, very big jump, um, getting closer to seven metres, but no jump. So Ennis will be retaining her lead with that particular performance. 4.901 point she's up to now with that 6.15. Mokniuk in the heptathlon then. She's a class act in this particular event and will be hoping to move up the points table. And yes, that's in the mid six area. So that's the best that we have seen so far. White flag raised for the Ukrainian. So we saw Ennis Hill at 6.15, and uh, this one looks uh, fairly significantly further than that. Indeed it is, 6.44. Well, actually, that's the second best of the day. We haven't seen the best one yet. I hope we will very shortly. Now, Tyson Eaton. Slightly disappointing first day because she's uh, in fourth place, the favourite coming in here. And this is an event which could be crucial to her. It's an event she'll be expecting to get really good points from. So let's see how she goes. Personal best of 6.72. Oh, that's very good. Yeah, that's a six and a half meter jump. So Tyson Eaton will be narrowing the gap on the British athletes so ahead of her. Visa also in third place. But Tyson Eaton almost 100 points behind uh, Jessica Ennis Hill overnight. But over 100 points behind. Now she'll have narrowed that. There it is, yes, 6.55, with a nice little breeze behind. Takes her up into second place overall, 4.898. Two more jumps to go, of course, as we now move into round two, and here's Claudia Rat from Germany, who opened with a no jump. And again, a very good event for her. She's got a 6.73 personal best, and indeed a windy 6.84. So this is an event when, again, she would expect to move up in the tally. That looks... Uh, yeah, I think she's hit that perfectly, and that's a very good jump. That may well be better even than Tyson Eaton's. White flag raised. So the German athlete excelling, as one would expect, a former world and European junior champion at heptathlon. Can be big changes today with the long jump and javelin and 800 meters. Some very different skills to those which we saw on day one. So the big jump's now beginning to come out. And this is the biggest so far, 661. Well, now let's catch up on what's been happening in the uh, heptathlon. This is Jessica Ennis Hill, got a good safe jump in to start with at 6 meters 16. Oh, that's an excellent performance by Jessica Ennis Hill, the Olympic champion, former world champion, white flag race there. Yeah, very fine performance. So uh, that's going to uh, keep her well in the lead in the heptathlon. I'm still uh, hoping that we're going to see an even more dramatic moment in a little while as well let's see what uh, distance is yes 643 so that takes her up to 4990 points this is the moment I've been talking about this is Katarina Johnson Thompson in the long jump she comes here with two no jumps very, very big jumps easily the best we've seen but both of them over the line by about three centimeters so this is a last chance. We've seen athletes do it before. Remember, Karolina Kluft once having two no jumps and really coming through with a huge jump to seal it. Now, Katarina Johnson-Thompson, she's a very fine long jumper and hits that board and it's way out there. It's a seven meter jump. But is it a valid jump or not? She was 
spot on that takeoff board. And they're going back, and they're, oh, it looks like there might be, there might just be an indentation in the plasticine. Johnson Thompson is looking at it. All the officials are gathering around. Because if this is a no jump, it's no points. Oh, spot on. But the foot is just going over into the plasticine. Now, then it tips over. And does she actually make a mark there or not? This is going to be so, so close. It's a fantastic jump. It's the sort of performance which could even take her into gold medals. But it could be no points at all. Massive dis deliberations here. The judges involved, the chief inv officials involved. They're still talking about it. It's going on and on. Is it a no jump or not? The flag has not been raised yet. One has to say that either way, there's going to be a little bit of luck involved. No, the red flag is raised. It's no points for Katarina Johnson-Thompson. Well, you can say she's been brave to go for it. On the other hand, if only, if only, maybe on that second jump, she just played safe a little bit and gets something at least in the bag. It, the next best jump we've seen is, I think, 6.55. This was close to seven meters. Fantastic performance by Johnson-Thompson, but it could all be in vain. Her medal chances will have gone if this is maintained as a red flag, maintained as a no-jump, and that flag went up. The liberations continue, but there it is. X, 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 no points for Johnson Thompson. Well, that is incredible. You'd have thought that uh, she would have got a, at least one jump in there, a safe jump anyway, early on before she went for the big jump, but uh, she gambled, and it was so, so close. Well, we go back to the uh, heptathlon. And just to give you up to date on the conditions here, it's, it's very warm now in the stadium. It's about uh, 30 degrees. And the wind is not really as strong as it was yesterday, so not really causing a problems for the hurdlers, I don't think, or the long jumpers here. Yeah, this is uh, just closing uh, off the story in the heptathlon after the drama of Johnson Thompson. This is Mokniuk, who we saw earlier get off to a very good jump. And that's another one in the mid-six area. But, oh, what a shame of Johnson Thompson, who was way ahead of all the rest of the long jumpers, if you measured it from takeoff to landing. But you've just got to get it just like that. Perfect on the board there for the Ukrainian. And she'll move up nicely in the standings with good points coming from the long jump. Tyson Eaton also making progress in the long jump, but Jessica Ennis-Hill maintaining her lead at the top of the event. And for Mokanyuk, yes, uh, further improvement, 6.51. Well, that's the third best of the competition. So the heptathlon, the long jump standings headed by Claudia Rath at 6.61. And Tyson Eaton gaining ground on her rivals with that uh, second best jump, but an excellent one for Ennis Hill as well. And the real shock that Katerina Johnson-Thompson, easily the best jumper in the field, produced the best jumps, but they were all no jumps. The last one very, very marginal, and she gets no points. The same story, I'm afraid, also to another of the top athletes, Carolyn Schaefer of Germany, also no jumps. So we've got the javelin and the 800 meters to come. And they're already getting out there for the javelin, warming up for that, I think. But the story is that uh, Ennis Hill is in the lead, and Tyson Eaton is in second place. Probably going to check on those scores, but Ennis has got 4.990. Pushing him over 100, I think, uh, back to Tyson Eaton. Yes, there it is. 4.990 for Ennis Hill. 4.888, 102 behind for Tyson Eaton. Mokanyuk has moved all the way up to third, and Rath to fourth. Vissa moved down just a little bit to fifth. It'll be all to play for, not only in this javelin, which could change things quite a, a bit, but also with the 800 metres to come. Fantidou, they're only 4-1-4-1 in 26, but she's the best javelin thrower of the lot, so she'll move up. But Johnson Thompson, 3-9-2-5, and it could well have been well in the lead, but for that long jump. 
So the throwing order and the javelin is shown. This is the first group, two groups. And, um, well, this doesn't feature any of the uh, very top contenders. Other than that, big names are through as we look at the woman identified for you earlier as the best javelin thrower of the, all the heptathletes. That's Ifantidou of Greece. So let's see what she can do. Certainly she's uh, an athlete. The official standing there just in front of the 50-meter line. Well, they better watch it because she can go further than that. see whether she can do that and what has so far been a bit of a disappointing competition overall for her there it is yep just about spot on that 50 meter line so we find in the heptathlon that different athletes come into their own in different events and for the first time Infantidou can start quite know what all these gestures mean I hope the athletes do oh it was 55 meter line indeed 54 94 easily the best so far in fact there's no one in the uh, competition who's going to get close to that I can reasonably safely say oh have you said that no I'm wrong I'd forgotten yes Brewson is a good thrower as you can see from those personal best so let's see whether she can indeed challenge the Greek thrower as well as she can yep just over 50 not as far but a, a good throw good points from an athlete looking to move up the standings Actually, we've also got Edmanina now I come to look down the list of uh, Latvia who is a 50 meter thrower And 50-48, and um, well, it shows that Brosen has moved into the lead. Not particularly significant because the top contenders are all in the next pool. Adminina, another 50-meter thrower, the Latvian here, launches her spear out into the bluish sky above. Yes, and that's a 50-meter throw as well. So some very good throwing here. I don't think the um, top athletes in the next pool will be able to match this, but uh, these are athletes who are rather further down the standings. And we saw Infantidou get nose near to 55 metres. And this is over 50. Coach happy. It's another fine javelin throw indeed in this heptathlon. We've got some good throwers out there. And Brerson's gone out now to 53-52. Well, 5-6-2-0 points now with two events to go. So we now look at uh, Kluchinova, Czech Republic, who started at 38 metres 15. So Kluchinova's second throw of the three she can take in the javelin. And that's a huge improvement. I'm so delighted by that as well. She might be. Just checking back on uh, her personal best in the javelins, 50 metres 75. So obviously the opening of 38 was a disappointment. But nonetheless, this is certainly challenging that PB. tell with the keen interest there it is a personal best 5109 for Klochinova of the Czech Republic and it's four women over 50 meters and an excellent javelin competition as we look at the, one of the other ones Adminina from Latvia launches that spear well well conditions are obviously good not only for 400 meter running but also for a javelin thrower and she's absolutely delighted again As the javelin throwers like a win, well, there's not nothing much of that in the stadium. 
what there is certainly are conditions that can make coaches do that. 53 metres 69 for Adminina. Well, the javelin, uh, we're just winding up now. This is Vetter, the, uh, one of the very talented trio of Dutch athletes who are contending hard in this women's heptathlon. And a lot of excellent javelin throws here as uh, some of these athletes close up on those above them in the standings. It's interesting to see where the athletes in the next pool who will be coming out shortly can similarly get close to or beating personal bests. Infantidu then with her final throw in the javelin. The great series already, a couple of throws just under 55 metres. Certainly enjoying coming into our own in this event, and that makes it three very, very good throws. This might be even further. Let's see it for the Greek athlete who's got a personal best in the javelin of 57.50. So no surprise that she's throwing so well. Greek heptathlon champion with a heptathlon best of 6.113 points. She was way back down in the standings uh, in the 20s. She'll move up some places, obviously, with these points. Indeed, that is 56-19, the best throw of the competition. Well, this is just concluding the first pool of the javelin. And we have seen some splendid throwing here with a whole series of 50-metre-plus throws. And uh, there we go again. This is uh, Adminina, who's really been enjoying herself. Just got within four centimetres of her personal best. So, 53-69 in the previous round. Uh, has this been an improvement? He likes it. They all like it. Not quite, but look at that. Fine series of throws. Couple over 53. And now Tiam of Belgium. 45-56 so far for the Belgian. Oh, that's... Uh, Big improvement there, so valuable points for Tiam, giving her the chance of moving up as well. Tiam long seen as one of the up-and-coming talents in this event, particularly excelling, of course, as a high jumper. She's 21 years of age. Personal best in the javelin of 52.03, and that's the best of the day for her. 49.31 takes her up to 5.53 points. Third place, but... The top athletes in the event coming out here. Jessica Ennis-Hill is the leader by over 100 points as she seeks to regain her world crown. So that's a confirmation of five women over 50 metres in the first group of the javelin. Yvonne is 56-19, giving her 980 points. Very good standard. A series of personal bests by the athletes there. But, of course, most of the top contenders just warming up right now for the second pool of the javelin. And as I say that, this is the order of throwing. Johnson Thompson. Incidentally, we gather that the British team have put in a protest, well, they were bound to, to the jury of appeal. But um, really, it didn't look as if there was much chance of that succeeding because we did see the picture. She was just over the line, I'm afraid. So very, very close, and we understand that that has not uh, succeeded in earning her um, massive score, which she would have got for the long jump. But she's continuing to compete, and that's as it should be. Showing what might have been, I suppose. See what she can do in the javelin, which is uh, one of the events that she's got to still a lot to learn, for which she's got a lot to learn. Heptathlon, then the first throw for Jessica Ennis-Hill. Big lead in the event. A nice consistent thrower in the mid-40s usually. Oh, and that's a decent start. In fact, that's just what she needed. A throw of around 42 metres or so, a little more than that perhaps. That uh, means she's obviously lost ground to some of those athletes we saw throw over 50 metres in the previous pool, but they didn't include major, her major rivals. And uh, this will mean that Ennis... May well go into the final event, the 800 metres, still with a good lead. 
42-51. That's Hexer's score up to 5-7-0-6. Now let's see how Tyson Ethan can respond to that. Could gain a little in the javelin. Personal best of 46 foot 47. 102 points behind Ennis coming into this event. Slightly weak throw there, I would have thought, but um, that's decent, of course. But uh, if it's better than Ennis, it's only by a little bit. Rianne Tyson Eden. Good long jump the first thing this morning, but otherwise she's a little bit below par. Well, he started to like it, and then he decided he didn't like it quite as much, perhaps. And 42.94, so that takes her up to 5.612 points. Now, Visser, down in 10th place now. She really has slipped back a bit in the javelin, but she always would have known, of course, that this is one of her weaker events. Best as a, a hurdler. How's this one doing at a fair against that 40 meter line? Nope, coming short. So I have to say a little disappointing for the Dutch youngster. Because her javelin best is 44.01 and she was a four meters down on that. But, uh, youngster, this is obviously an event that she's got to spend some time getting that technique. And uh, the fact that you're a great natural athlete doesn't necessarily mean you've got the shoulder and arm to whip the javelin out. This is Erica Bugard of the USA. But, uh, amongst the top contenders for the heptathlon. Mississippi State University student. And a very modest throw indeed. There's Ennis Hill, just concluding uh, a fine couple of days so far with just the 800 to come. Here goes her third javelin throw. And uh, that's not as good, but she started with a decent one. This is 39.56, and that 42.51 means that she goes into the 800 metres in the lead with 5,706 points. Now, Mockenyuk had made big progress to move up into the top placings uh, after a fine long jump. And uh, she obviously is still strongly in medal contention. But she needs more from the javelin because she has slipped back a little. problem will come for her in the 800 meters because her best there is a fairly modest 215 so yeah the javelin she is performing at her best ever level but it means that the last two events could be costly for her having briefly and probably only briefly moved into medal contention Mokonyuk's throw, 38 metres 63. So her best, 38 93, which is her personal best. Now here's Nuaba of USA. Oh, she's uh, contending nicely in the heptathlon, though, having had the Severe misfortune to crash out in the hurdles in the first event, thereby ruining any chance of getting a good position in the event. Oh, and overbalancing there, so no throw here. So that concludes the uh, javelin. We'll just need to wrap up the result and what that means in terms of the points, having seen the two poles of women javelin throwers.
with all the best throwers coming in that first group when we had five women over 50 meters. So there is the result of the javelin. If we put the two rounds together, all those best throws coming from the first group. But importantly, the two main contenders, Tyson Eaton, only 18th best, but 42.94, and Ennis only 20th best, but uh, 42.51 for another 716 points. So this is the situation. Ennis Hill leads at 5.706. Burson is second at 5.620. Then Tyson Eaton, 5.612. And Adminina, 5.606. It's close. It'll all depend on the 800 meters. But Jessica Ennis Hill has every chance of regaining her world title. It's the women's heptathlon. There will be four races over 800 metres. They'll be performing in reverse order of their standing. So, in other words, we've got the lesser uh, point scorers so far to come. Tyson Eaton, the world leader in the heptathlon, 6808. No one's going to get that score today. In fact, he's scoring just a little bit down for most of the top athletes. And there is the situation. Jessica Ennis Hill is almost certain to retain her world or to regain her world title. With 5,706 points, she's got a big lead over Burson, but the battle really on for the other medals. Just skimming down the rest of the standings at the moment. We've got just uh, five women out on the track, and they're the uh, athletes in lower positions. So we've lost some along the way, and they're not all taking positions here a couple of athletes sadly in this race who've uh, lost contention because they got zero points non-starters here Regal Schaefer and Slack well those uh, athletes are unfortunate uh, Nuaba of the USA who crashed out in the very first event the hurdles and Katerina Johnson Thompson who would have been in second place if she'd got a decent long jump in and who would be almost certain of a medal but for the fact that she did three no jumps in the long jump the last one by the narrowest possible margin. So let's introduce the uh, athletes here. Nuaba, a very good 800 meter runner. Her best is 207.13. And then Katerina Johnson Thompson, who can only think of what might have been because she's got a best of 207.64. And I think she would be the silver medalist, but for that long jump. Another day for the brilliant youngster. Good to see that she's coming out though and uh, seeing what she can do in the remaining events after that catastrophe of the long jump. Just to reiterate, she had a jump nearly seven meters in the last round. And she was just over and into the Plasticine by what, a centimeter? I thought it was over seven meters actually. And it'd be interesting to see what it would have happened. But there we go, as you say, Peter, another day for her. Having said that though, she's 29th. Even with, uh, with that disaster in the Well, I know, jump. it just shows. She's actually right at the back of the field, and I'm not sure. I don't think she's really going to go for a fast <laughs> time here. I mean, she's capable of running 2.07. Well, she's not going to do that the way she's running here. She is just determined to actually finish the event, and full marks to her, because it is going to be. There's long years ahead of her to come, and she's going to be a challenger for the world best, no question about that. She competed brilliantly with her 5,000 points in the European indoor to win the pentathlon gold on that occasion. This is our second World Championships, and she's just trotting round. It is good that she's decided to complete the race, and I guess quite sensible, bearing in mind she's so far away from getting a medal. She doesn't want to risk getting a hamstring injury, but also, all credit to Barbara Nawaba of America. She crashed to the ground in the hurdles, so she could have 101 at the bell. She's really going for it. She's a really good 800-meter runner. 207's her lifetime best, but she could have opted to drop out after the first round in the uh, 100 hurdles, but she's deciding she wants to finish this World Championship positively, and she's on course to doing that, just that. Well, she's on course to do more than that. <laughs> 61 for the first one. I mean, that's I think almost she may just pay for it a little, Steve. That's 61 almost as fast, if not faster than some of the 800 meter women might run in their particular event. So she fact, is striding out, but she will suffer, no doubt about that. She's that been, sort of pace will pay the price over the last part of this race. She's been run down a little bit, actually, now. I think it's Markerson who's uh, narrowing the gap on her. It was 135.58, so she has slowed quite dramatically, and I don't think she's going to win this race, actually, in the end. But full marks again, just like Rob was saying, for competing so well throughout the competition, and uh, she's doing just that 
in this final event. Well, she really is toughing in it out. This is a good run from the Waba, really. As Rob said, she didn't have to compete after that disastrous first event in the heptathlon. But she's kept going, and she's kept going in this 800 metres too. And she but is going to win it. Well, well done to her. It's a hard way to run an 800, isn't it, Steve? 61.8, and then uh, just outside <laughs> 71, 70 seconds for the second half. But it's not even pace, so no, it's 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 not it's not the easy way to run it. But uh, she did it nevertheless. Pace judgment, maybe not her strong point, Peter. Well, she just decided she wanted. To, I mean, there's nothing else to do rather than to try and do something very special in terms of getting a good time. Well, she's uh, still standing, and that's a good performance, really. And Marcuson never really narrowed the gap there, but even she, she really tired in the finishing straight there. And here's Johnson Thompson. As I said, nice to see her actually complete the uh, course, but uh, it'll have to be another day for what surely will be many, many more major medals to come for Johnson Thompson at ch top championship level. Well, there's the result of that first heat of the heptathlon 800 metres. Points all important, but to really no medals will be decided until we get to the final heat of this heptathlon and that comes a little later in the program now to the second heat erica bugard not taking her place in the start in the starting lineup taking you through from the inside carolina tominska seventh here in this olympic stadium back in 2008. She's in 23rd overall. Bugard and her would have been the ones battling for the top finish here in the 800 metres, but the Americans not here. We've got Infantidou of Greece in three. Osazua of Nigeria, four. Bugard doesn't take her place in the starting lineup here. Catch of Russia in six. Agnew of Switzerland in seven. Fodorova, world indoor bronze medalist last year of Ukraine. She's in eight, and Portia Bing of New Zealand on the outside in nine. So just the American deciding not to take her place in the starting lineup. So Tominska got a lifetime best of 205, which is brilliant for these heptathletes. Season's best of 211. These athletes are placed between 17th and 24th, and it's Tominska leading. Osazua of Nigeria in second place. If Fantidou is struggling, she's a brilliant uh, javelin thrower. 800 metres, not particularly her forte. So Tominska leading, Osazua in second, and Portia Bing with heavy strapping on that right knee, going well at the moment in third. She had a particularly good 200 metres to finish off her opening day yesterday. But Tominska determined to finish with a win just as Barbara Mwaba was for America in the first of these four heats. Well, look at the time. It's a little bit slower than the first of these heats, 64, and a bit more conservative, but that's the way you should run these races. And it looks as if Tominska's doing a good job. A best, as you said, Rob, around about uh, 2.05, but uh, season's best about 2.11. She's on for that sort of pace at the moment, I think. So Tominska just stretching it out down the back straight. Portia Bing has gone past Osazua. So the Nigerian's gone into third and just out of shot. We ought to make mention of the young Swiss athlete, the brand new European junior champion, just 19 years of age from Switzerland, Caroline Agnew. She may well have an opportunity to try and close down the Nigerian. But it's Tominska here by quite some margin from Portia Bing. This is going to be a decent time. I think Nawaba's time in the first of these 800s was about 2.12. And this is going to be fairly similar. Good run this from the Polish athlete. 2.13, Bing in second place. If Fantidou, after starting really slowly, has come through brilliantly for third, Osazua is in fourth, then comes Fodorova. Very tired catch. And last over the line was Caroline Agnew of Switzerland. Good experience for her. So Tominska, 2.13.04. That's not a bad finish for her. That should help her move up a couple of places. There's heat three of the Heptath, and the main heat obviously coming a bit later. 
Most of these athletes in the uh, mid-teens in standing. Sadiko, there she is. 14th at the moment, 53-53. And Claudia Rath just on her outside. She's in ninth place at the moment, 54-71. This up just behind her, 54-33. Not a lot of points difference, but in the 800 metres, it's a tough event. Most of these women know where they stand before they actually line up. So they've almost calculated in their minds where they are and what they've got to do. And sometimes the task is too hard. There's Claudia Rath. She's probably the best of these uh, women in the 800 metres. Personal best of 2.6. She's the best of 2.8. So we expect her to go off hard, the German. I think she's got every incentive. Uh, it's, it's asking a lot. She's in ninth place, but it's not totally inconceivable that she could move up close to medal standings if she really runs a very, very good 800. Well, that's exactly what she's trying to do, Peter. She's going off very hard indeed. But it's a temptation, isn't it, to go off too hard, really? Got to control the enthusiasm. And she's going off. Let's see, she might go through in about 30 seconds for that first 20 metres. That's uh, ooh, well under 30 seconds. So she's got to really tone it down a little bit. Well, she's clearly highly motivated. She was fourth in Moscow. She was fifth at the World Indoors last year. So she's been there or thereabouts for the last couple of years. And she clearly wants to get herself in a position where she can avoid finishing fourth or fifth. Well, she's doing a good job. Dave Munro, the American just behind her, she's a very good runner too at the 800 metres, about 2.8 her best. And she's being left at the moment. You can just see there, Claudia looking up at the scoreboard to just see where she is in relation to everybody else. And this is a very fast time too, indeed. 61. Now, we saw previously that that sort of pace can really be quite devastating to you over the second lap. Can she maintain this rhythm? If she does, so she's not going to maintain this rhythm, but if she can hold on long enough, as Peter said, she might move herself considerably up that uh, placing at the moment. Well, it's going to be a long, tough last 250 for Claudia Rath. 206, her lifetime best, 208 this season. And Dame Munro, who only just missed a medal in the World Indoors last year, is beginning to close. Visser is up there as well, trying to close down on the top three. But Rath seems to have found another little bit of momentum there in the last 50 or so metres. Well, the third, the third 200 in any 800 is a horrible distance. Those uh, pains over the back straight you get until you come into that home straight and you start realising that you're coming closer and closer to the line. She's doing well. This will be the better time of the three heats so far by far, if she can keep it going. Just behind her, closing fast, actually, the America there, Dave Munro coming through. The time, yep, it is faster by about, what, four seconds or so. Two minutes, 9.67. Now, whether that's going to be good enough, Peter, we'll have to wait and see how far it moves her up. I think that's probably just not quite enough. I mean, it depends what people run in the last heat, but I think she needed to do something pretty sensational because... You don't gain too much in an 800 on the points table unless you really do finish a long way ahead of other people. Um, I think it will probably be too much. She's over 100 points down on the other medalists. But all credit to her oh, yeah. for having such a good go. Well, there's a result of that third of the 800 metres. Claudia Rath's time given her 970 points. We'll have to wait and see if it moves her up into the... Uh, Top echelons of the heptathlon, wait and see. But we're now coming to, really, the main event of this uh, heptathlon, the fourth and final heat of the women's 800 metres. Yes, these are the top eight competitors after their scores in six events. Last one was the javelin. And so the medals will be determined in this race. In the inside, it's Nadine Brursen, who is lying in second place at the moment on 5.620 points. A decent 800 metre runner. 2-11-11, there are faster runners in this field. Major contender for silver or bronze. As is Leon Tyson Eaton of Canada, who's lying in third place at 5-6-1-2, just eight behind Burson. But she may have a little problem with a leg injury. She is taking her place in this race, but there was some doubt. Then we have Nafitasu Tiam of Belgium who is in fifth place at 5.535 five, five points. But afraid 800 metres is not her strength. She's not really a medal contender. 
Then Anouk Vetter of the Netherlands. Well, she's lying seventh at 5-4-9-3. She, too, is a 2.20 runner. She's not a medal contender either. This, of course, is assuming there's no real setbacks for the major people in this race. Then we have Laura Ikonanietzi now married as Admedina, and uh, she is lying fourth, 5-6-0-6, very much in the shout for a medal. She's got a best of 2.11.83. Here is Jessica Ennis-Hill, the Olympic champion, returning after the birth of baby Reggie last year to the World Championships, which she won before, and she's on her way to another gold medal, barring an accident here. She leads at 5.706 points, 86 ahead of everybody else. Then we have Zivotsky Farkas of Hungary, lying eighth on 5.492 points. Finally, Mokniuk of Ukraine, who's lying sixth at 5-4-9-4. Well, as I said, NSL is almost certain uh, of victory. I don't think it's conceivable that anyone could narrow the gap for her. Uh, a second in uh, this race, and Ennis Hill is certainly capable of running faster than everybody else. It's worth about 14 seconds. Well, she's got an 80-odd point advantage. But Tyson Eaton or Adminino or Brusen, where will the other medals go? They could be very close indeed, with Tyson Eaton the favourite for silver, if she's OK, if she hasn't really got any problem with that uh, possible lower leg injury. This is Jessica Ennis-Hill, then, who's had a very solid set of performances, perhaps sealed it best when she went over 6.40 in the long jump earlier today, and she's settling in behind Tyson Eaton. Just needs to keep her in her sights. Tyson Eaton would need to beat her by a huge margin. But if Tyson Eaton could keep going as well, she'll be sure of silver medal in this race. He had gone through quick, through 300 metres. The rest are really struggling. Keep our eyes open for Adminina and Brusen, between whom I think the bronze medal is at stake, just 14 points behind these athletes. And it is indeed Tyson Eaton who is making a very brave bid. She's been a little below her best in some events. She had a very good long jump, though, earlier today. And they're going through in 62.83, that's quick. The personal best of uh, Tyson Eaton is good at this event, of course. It's one of her strengths. She's run uh, 2.09.03 and is opening up a gap of uh, Ennis. Well, if she's going to do damage, Tyson Eaton, it's got to be on this third 200 metres, Peter. I don't know what the gap's going to be that you think significant to make the difference. Inconceivable that there can be a change if just Ennis keeps going reasonably. OK, well, but that's good. Tyson, Tyson, Tyson Eaton will be set for silver, coming up for 200 metres. Ennis is now closing the gap. If, it's, if Tyson Eaton wins by second, and that's the sort of gap at the moment, it would only be 14 points difference. So Tyson Eaton's really given it her all, and Jessica Ennis is now looking to win this in style. She's sure of the gold medal unless she falls over. And she's looking set to not only win, not only win on a comeback to athletics, but also to win this last race as well. This is a fantastic triumph by one of the greatest athletes Britain has ever had. It's Jessica Ronis Hill who comes home to regain her world title and win the last event, the 800 metres, in 2 10 13. Tyson Eaton has taken the silver with a brave second place, and then the, it's going to be very close for the uh, silver and bronze medals. He was looking to be between Adminina and Brusen. We just need to check on the times they've recorded. But what a wonderful triumph after taking a year out for pregnancy, coming back, being uncertain throughout much of the year whether she'd take part here in Beijing. She said she'd only take part if she could perform with great credit. She's done that and more. Wonderful performance. I'm not sure. I can't remember the last time where I saw a multi-event where the winner actually won the last discipline, Peter. Can you remember that one? I does win one or two, Steve. But you can't remember, though, can you? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't ask well, a question about that. Je Jessica yeah, Ennis Hill yeah, in yes. London there you go. in you 2012. Rob, Rob well done, there. Rob. But Congratulations. She, she is so, so gutsy. I think it's worth reminding ourselves she hasn't just lost a year to a baby. She lost the previous year to injury. Yes, She's been right. basically nowhere since winning the Olympic title in 2012 and all credit to her for deciding to come to Beijing and really having a go. I think at the start of the year, if you'd said a bronze or silver, she'd have bitten your hand off. But she's so, so competitive. You could argue 
she's not quite at her finest top top form it won't be as no, good a score as she produced in 2012 not, but it doesn't matter she's a supreme competitor and that is what she's proven here tonight six 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 nine points and it's a big lead she's won by 115 over tyson eaton with Adminina taking the bronze with 6-5-1-6, just 25 points ahead of Brurson. And she said she wanted to inspire her son Reggie, who uh, won't be taking much notice at home, he's too young, but when he watches this back in a few years' time, he'll realise what a very, very special athlete his mum is. This is the result of the last race of the heptathlon. It's the 800 metres, won by Jessica Ennis-Hill in 2-10-1-3 adding 963 points to her total. Brianne Tyson-Eaton did all she could and made sure of the silver medal with that time of 2.11 in second place. And uh, Adminina got the third place in the race, 2.13.79, and that assured her of the bronze. Well, I wonder if that's an omen. Super Saturday in the Olympic Stadium in 2012. There was a gold for Jessica Ennis. There was a gold for Mo Farah. And the other part of that triumvirate of excellence, Greg Rutherford, is one off, not the over overwhelming favourite for the long jump, but he's certainly in with a shout of a medal when that rolls around. But all credit to Jessica Ennis-Hill. Just such a gutsy, gutsy competitor. Finishing with a win just as she did in London. And there were signs of life when she competed in Gotsis and finished behind Brianna Tyson-Eaton, who set a national record for Canada on that occasion, because once again in Gotsis, it was these two out front, and Jessica Ennis-Hill finished her first heptathlon back from motherhood with a win on that occasion. And what a great rivalry this is turning out to be ahead of Rio 2016, especially when you bring into the mix Katerina Johnson-Thompson. Well, the traditional get-together of the heptathletes taking place. And Jessica Ennis-Hill has regained her title and finished in glory by winning the 800 metres. Always a tough one for the heptathletes at the end. She knew she virtually just had to coast round to be sure of victory, but she did more than that. She won the race. And I wonder whether that gold medal will mean even more than her Olympic title. Gold went to Jessica Ennis-Hill at 6.669 points. Silver to Tyson Eaton, 6.554. In bronze medal position, Adminina set a national record of 6.516.